Good afternoon and welcome back to Wishwell Farms. So I currently have thrips eating away at my new tomato seedlings already. And today I'm gonna to show you what I use to eradicate these pesky insects. So normally this time of year, you don't have to worry about insects on your tomatoes too much. However, once you get a couple really warm sunny days, if there are uh, overwintering insects in your greenhouse, they're going to come to life. And one that we deal with every year for the last 15 years are thrips. Thrips are hard to completely eradicate when you don't have concrete floors. They like to uh, overwinter in debris around the baseboards of your plants. Um, chopped up, ground up, you know, tomato material that may be on, on the, the floor in the gravel. Uh, it's impossible to completely eliminate all that stuff. So thrips always come back to life as soon as it gets warm and sunny. And they're already on my tomato plants that are two to three inches tall. So I have a couple items on my truck here. We're going to get some sprays mixed up. I'm going to show you what I use and how I mix them and how I apply them to the plants. I've already got a pretty detailed video about this from last year or two years ago, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go into too much depth in this video, but I do wanna show you how I wanna control these things before they get out of hand, because if you don't do it now, they're gonna, their life cycle's like 30 days long and they're gonna lay more eggs, and then the larvas are gonna hatch, and then it's just gonna start getting out of control so bad that it's hard to ever completely eradicate them. So this is a good time to get on top of it while there, there's only a few out there and they're uh, not laying eggs yet. So let's go get these things taken care of. Okay, change of plans. Uh, my son just called me. He's out filming a YouTube video, probably hunting and shooting guns out in our back pasture, like two miles from here, stuck in the mud. So I want to grab a chain and throw it in the ranger and let's go see if we can get him pulled out. doubt this little Polaris Ranger is going to be able to pull his truck out, especially if it's something very deep. But we're going to try this first. If this doesn't work, we'll go get a tractor. Goodness. Mainly just that. Oh, uh, okay. So if we can get that tire. It might be bottomed out to back on a tight. solid. Would it be better to back up first, pull it backwards? Or you want to try to go forward? Uh, Let me go look at the other side here. We're going to try to pull it out backwards first. I'm not very hopeful, but we're going to give it a shot since I'm here. We got to get that wheel back up on top that solid high side there. We're going to pull them back about three to five feet. And then I'll get back in front and see if we can go out frontwards. Didn't even budge. Looks like we're gonna have to go get a tractor. I'm not very hopeful, but we'll give it a shot. biggest question is do I take the tractor with duels the four-wheel drive tractor with duels or the little John Deere 4230 hmm I think the 4230 will get it
All right, now that that order of business is taken care of, let's get back to the greenhouse and kill some thrips. All right, back here at the greenhouse to get these thrips taken care of. I'm gonna show you three of the items that I use to control thrips. That seems to be our biggest issue, especially this time of year. Later on, it could be aphids or white flies or spider mites or hornworms. And I have probably a dozen total uh, items, different items that I use to control all those different insects. But for thrips, these three I'm gonna show you right now seem to work the best for me. And they're also labeled for organic use. So they're not really a, a, a synthetic harsh pesticide that uh, you know a lot of growers try, are trying to avoid these days, especially in greenhouse tomatoes. I sell mine as not organic because I'm not certified organic, but I do sell them as chemical free tomatoes. So here they are. Um, as a guard is just neem oil. Evergreen is pyrethrins, and that is just an extract of the chrysanthemum flower. Conserve is spinosad. Um, I could be wrong on the organic labeled use for this one. I think there's a different product that also uses spinosad that is labeled for organic use, not conserve, but it's the same active ingredient. So these are the three items that I use, and I'm gonna mix them up into a, a little squirt bottle, spray bottle like this. Sometimes I'll combine two. Um, like I'll do these two together and then I'll alternate maybe to these two. Sometimes I'll just use a single product. Okay, quick correction. I forgot about these two items. These are both wettable powders. Uh, this one's uh, the no flies and my coinosecticide and the Botana Guard. Um, it's kind of like a BT, you know, uh, I think it's just spores. Um, but you can see there, this one at least is OMRI listed. So it's labeled for organic use. I believe this one is as well, but I'm not positive. But uh, when I use these in conjunction with these three, uh, you're more likely to get control of the thrips when you have multiple life cycle stages of the thrip present. So uh, later on, when the thrips have gotten out of control a little bit, if they do, um, you can, you're gonna have eggs, larvae, and adults. So if I alternate between these and these, I'm uh, more likely to get all the different stages of the life cycle, and I believe these are not contact insecticides like some of these are. These need to actually be ingested and they disrupt the molding process. I think this one does. So yeah, I, I usually brush up on that information before I start spraying all of them just to make sure I'm alternating properly depending on the life cycle of the thrip. And another thing you need to be careful about when spraying these items, maybe not so much today because it is a little overcast and cloudy. Um, on a hot sunny day when these tomatoes are really soaking up the sunshine if you're not careful you can cause some uh i think it's phototoxicity where you could scorch the leaf tissue so i normally will spray them at night when the sun is starting to go not at night but i mean when the sun's starting to go down in the evening and there's not direct sunlight on them or even on a cloudy day i've had no problem spraying the whole crop so i don't know if you can see that through the camera but they're definitely uh getting a little bit more green color and size to them. Doesn't just look like a rock wool cube like it did in the last couple videos. Let's see if I can find a thrip here. I'll show you what they look like. All right, I got two right here in front of me. This leaf right here. See all the white speckling on it? I'm not sure how good this camera is gonna focus on that leaf. But there's like a, I can't tell if there's a thrip on there. They're so small. They're like a millimeter long and as thick as a hair. Yeah, there was a thrip on there. I just killed him. There's another thrip damage right there on that tomato leaf of my, that I'm grabbing. See how there's uh, white and black speckles? The white is where their piercing mechanism pierces the cell wall of the tomato, and they can leave behind a virus. And obviously, if you let them get out of control, that entire leaf will turn white and black. The black might be their excrement, you know, kind of like a house fly. It leaves a little black dot sometimes. Let's see if we can find some more. Oh, there's a thrip right there. He's crawling around on the outside of that cotyledon. Oh, he just flew away. So they are flying insects. There's another one. He's very, very small. He's walking around on the tip of that leaf right now. About one millimeter long and just a little bit thicker than a hair. There's another one. They're really starting to get bad here in the last two days. Let's get them sprayed. One thing that's interesting that I've found over the years is they don't bother the grape tomatoes much. These 36 flats are 
grape tomatoes. Ruby Crush is the variety. And I don't see one threat anywhere, no damage on any of these tomatoes. Now, later in the season, when we're uh, in mid to late July, they will start getting into the grape tomatoes, you know, when they're fully mature and have been fruiting for a month. For some reason, they really like the regular beefsteak tomatoes. And I forgot to tell you, on these uh, three items that, I'm gonna, that I spray on my tomatoes for thrips, um, the Azagard and Evergreen, you can mix up the two teaspoons per gallon. And on the Conserve, I just use one teaspoon per gallon. So there's a live thrip walking around on that cotyledon. You are going to die. Since these are one quart jugs, we're only gonna put about a quarter of a teaspoon in there, up to a half. I'm gonna go ahead and put a half in each one of these. And then I'm gonna do the evergreen, the uh, pyrethrins. Just in that one. Since I can put up the te two teaspoons per gallon, um, I'm putting a half a teaspoon, a good half teaspoon in there. And then in this one, we'll do neem oil mixed with it. There we go. Let's get these mixed up and kill some thrips. All right, I have my two mixtures here ready to go. One with Evergreen and Conserve, and the other with Azagard and Conserve. Since it is pretty sunny out, I don't feel comfortable spraying my entire crop today until it's uh, getting closer to evening uh, or it gets cloudy out. So what I'm gonna do right now as a test, I'm gonna spray my leftover plants. I'm gonna saturate the leftover plants really well and see how they look tomorrow and the next day and if there's no phototoxicity and no burning of the leaves of any kind then i'll feel more comfortable spraying my mixture across my entire crop the last thing you want is to accidentally mix something wrong or spray at the wrong time of the day when it's too sunny out and burn everything i've done it before i've learned my lesson so we're going to plant safely and be cautious and only spray some of the plants right now and then i'll uh come back and do the rest of them tomorrow or the next day. Okay, today I'm gonna to use the Azagard Conserve. And it's pretty easy to get the adults because they're usually on top of the leaves. So that should be all it takes. I'm gonna walk around and do that to uh, all the leftovers. One more. All right, that's all there is to it. Obviously, it's gonna take a few more minutes to do the whole 1,000 plants that I have out here. But uh, I'm gonna check these closely tomorrow, see if I can find any dead thrips or not see any fresh thrip damage and observe the plants closely, and then we'll spray the rest of the greenhouse. All right, that's where we're gonna end today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you again real soon down on the farm.